Today we're checking out the EG4 Charge Verter. This is a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery charger that actually plugs into a generator. And the max output is 100 amps or 5,000 watts. This allows you to charge a server rack battery from zero to 100% in only one hour. And this is a 240 volt AC plug, but you can also connect it to 120 volts. And these cables you connect to your battery bank. And the amount of current that goes through these cables can be changed on the screen. Screen, any value between 0 and 100 amps. Now the first question you might have is why would someone buy this? If you have an all-in-one system like a 6500EX or a 6048 or a 6548, it comes with an AC charger built in. So what a lot of people do is they connect their generator to the AC input and they charge their system with that. But this is actually a bad idea and can cause actual equipment failure. Um, EG4 states that their customer service department Department, the number one cause of failure is having an undersized generator with a dirty AC output connected to their all-in-one devices. If you want to use a generator with the all-in-one system, they recommend a generator with an output of 22,000 watts, which is very expensive and very large. So they designed the charge verter to actually work with small portable gasoline generators that are very budget friendly. Instead of buying a massive 22,000 watt generator, you can buy one of these with a small and budget friendly harbor freight generator and then bam, you have yourself a system. Now for most of the year, you do not need a gasoline generator and if you have a reliable grid connection, you are good to go. But for people that are specifically off grid and depend on a gasoline generator, especially if they live far from the equator, they could pair one of these up with a small gasoline generator and they'll be good to go. Also, the variable current at the DC output is designed to work with small portable generators. That way you can have the perfect output for your generator and that will increase the performance and efficiency. Also, you can connect it to the grid and charge with that instead. For example, if you have an EV charger in your garage with a NEMA 1450 outlet, you can buy an adapter from Amazon and plug this in, and you can charge your solar power system with your EV charger outlet. Or you can plug this into an EV truck when they actually make a reliable one, and you can charge your solar power system. And that's why I bought that EV truck. I was like, oh man, if we get this massive charger, we can plug it in and we can charge my system. But but that thing was defective, unfortunately, so please check out the video if you want to learn more. But lots of ways to use this. You can charge your system with a 240 volt supply, and that's really cool. And any supply, even if the AC output from your small portable generator is awful, it will not hurt your equipment. You can plug this into anything you want, and it will just simply charge. So let's actually try it out. I'm going to buy a gasoline generator, and I hate I hate gasoline generators, but I understand why people use them and a lot of people do. So I have to keep an open mind and we're gonna try out a gasoline generator. I haven't used one in many years, but we're gonna go to Harbor Freight and get the most popular one and plug it in and see how well it works. So this is called a generator. Now on today's episode of Ancient Technologies, we're gonna learn how it works. This is what my ancestors used. So let's add the gas and the oil. I could build a battery in the time it takes for me to fill this with oil. Or I could put solar panels on the ground, it's so much easier. This one doesn't have the 240. Oh, it has the 120. Gosh, dang it. I'm so mad. I have an adapter so we can still use it, but gosh, dang it. And I filled this up with my Tesla. Actually, this is like a little Tesla range extender. So it actually has a 30 amp RV plug. So I made my own adapter. We're just gonna plug it in and fire it up. I don't know which one's hot, so I'm just gonna guess and try the black one. That generator is already stinky, holy cow. I hate that smell, man. So now we need to plug this into the generator. Oh, look at that, we have power. And now it's charging, but we need more current. So let's change the settings. Oh, it changed to four. Let's do 10 amps first. We've got 10 amps, so it's actually working. Look at that. So let's increase the amperage. There we go, look at that. We are charging with gasoline. 
And on the screen it says 58.8 amps and so does my Fluke meter. Now if you wanna run this off of 120 volts, you need to see the pinout guide and wire it so that it actually works because the first few attempts it did not work, but my red was my neutral. So please read the manual if you wanna make your own adapter or just purchase it through them. I just wanna see it work with the generator. Now we're gonna disconnect this and connect it to the grid with 240 volts and do the maximum output. Now this is the grid connection. This is NEMA 1450 and I have an adapter for 240 volt four prong generator. So we're just gonna plug this all together just like that. Now I just turned on the breaker and the fans turned on so it should be charging. We can crank this all the way up to 100 and look at that 100 amps. Let's verify with our meter. We've got 99.6 amps and it is starting to get hot and it says that it will get hot. So be careful where you mount this thing. So super cool device. I think a lot of people, especially those that live far from the equator, I think they would love one of these. Something else to mention is battery chargers are not cheap, especially if they have a variable current output. Um, consider the cost of an Ames charger and compare it to the price of this. This thing is a fantastic deal compared to the competition. They've actually been testing one for 3,600 hours. So yeah, it's gonna have a good warranty. I think it's five years. And they're also gonna have a special sale if you buy two of the inverters, you can get one of these for free. So I'll have a link below for that. But yeah, pretty cool. I'm gonna be running the heck out of this because I use battery chargers in my shop every day. So if it breaks, I'll let you guys know and we'll make a video in the future on that if it does. Now when it comes to battery chargers for off-grid living, the most important thing is how reliable it is. So if you guys have any issues with this, please post your problems on our form at DIYSolarForum.com. And please check out the form if you haven't already. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.